Hello everybody, in today's video we are going to show you a system that is uh, designed for campers, boats or any other special vehicle that requires warm water and interior heating using an Ebospeller 5 kW heater and active heat exchangers. Our current setup has a 5 kW heat exchanger. Uh, we've been using this uh, successfully together with a 5 kW heater. But in our test, uh, during uh, heating, we have found that only 30% of the heater's power is uh, actually used for uh, maintaining this heat exchanger. So the plan is to disconnect this one and try two bigger heat exchangers also from Calori. These are stated 4 kW each and uh, we are curious how the heater will handle these heat exchangers and uh, how much uh, how much of the heater's power will be used to maintain these uh, two heat exchangers. As you can see, a uh, main component for this setup is a stainless steel uh, boiler, uh, which also inside features another plate heat exchanger for uh, heating up water um, for the showers or the sink or whatever you need it for. Also, we can see the heater, the batteries, a fresh water pump that uh, is also the kind that we would find in a camper a little expansion tank and also two big fresh water containers during our uh, previous test we have found that uh, the system is capable of maintaining uh, 45 degrees uh, centigrade for the warm water for a period of uh, about 14 minutes and uh, this is tr translated to about uh, 35 liters of water and I think uh, for a camper uh, this is pretty good and it's also enough especially when you're off grid and you don't have um, a constant supply of water also, this is the controller that we'll be using, it's an easy start timer and uh, it has a temperature sensor connected to it, so we can easily control the fans of the heat exchangers on and off, depending on the temperature setting and the temperature uh, achieved by this system. In my next video, we will also be swapping the heater with a more powerful one, a 10 kW heater this time, and um, see how that will perform compared to today's test. So we'll start by uh, removing the old heat exchanger, the small one, and uh, mounting the two bigger heat exchangers in order, so in order to do the tests and see how our heater will um, cope with this setup. So we have changed a little bit our uh, our warm water circuit that comes from the heater. Uh, previously it was, it was going through the heat exchanger and then going to the boiler. But now we have connected it directly to the boiler and uh, we'll be using 
uh, two separate connections and uh, an external water pump for uh, these other two heat exchangers so uh, now uh, with this done we will connect the hoses and also hook it up, hook it up electrically to the to the system so we can switch on or off the fans and the pump After this is, this is done actually, uh, we will start up the pump and um, I, I think uh, this system should uh, work fine now and it's ready for testing. We will fire up the heater and uh, see how it, it performs. We also connected the fans from these two heat exchangers, uh, as you can see, uh, this is only one speed, so um, it will be easy, easier to control. The previous heat exchanger had two fan speeds, so this is why we needed the switch, to switch between the two speeds. We can now see the current water temperature before starting the heater and uh, we know now for experience that it takes about uh, 40 to 50 minutes to heat up the water in the tank to about 71 degrees. The heater is starting, uh, it has its own uh, pump separately that is controlled via pulse with modulation and the pump uh, the pump's rotation is controlled according to the water temperature and uh, this is why we can achieve a much faster heating up of the boiler than uh, only with an on off pump okay guys so uh, we started up the pump just a little bit to get all the air out of the system actually uh, I had a pretty hard time um, getting all the air out from these two heat exchangers I had to remove uh, the return line completely and uh, empty it into a bucket so everything uh, is airless currently we see the temperature of the boiler and uh, we see that we are getting close so we are waiting to turn on the fans so after the system stabilized and the water temperature was uh, constant and the heater started to to reduce the power to its minimum uh, we have started the fans um, and uh, waited for the system to stabilize again to see at what capacity the heater is running to maintain these two heat exchanger in, in operation here we can see the um, temperature that the heaters are uh, blowing and also the inside temperature the ambient temperature and we can see that the heater is actually stabilized about 60 63 percent so we went a little bit further and took everything outside uh, now we can see that here uh, it's much colder the temperature is uh, zero degrees but um, 
the heaters are blowing about uh, 35 40 degrees outside which is uh, surprisingly a really good uh, uh, temperature exchange so the air is getting heated up by more than 35 degrees going through the heat exchanger in these conditions the heater was running at um, 92 and 95 98 percent it was switching through power levels but we can say a medium of 92 maybe 95 percent of the heat output so actually we can say that the heater reached its limits with this uh, current setup so after all this test we have our, our results um, and uh, we can see that normal operation this little heater this 5 kilowatt heater should uh, run these two heat exchangers without a problem uh, even in uh, colder conditions and also with the current setup uh, we can supply hot water for about uh, 15 minutes which is okay for a camper so thank you for watching this video and i hope uh, you can make an idea for choosing your set up in your mobile home camper or boat uh, and also you can choose the right heater the right heat exchangers so all the system will run smoothly